Be sure to check out Watch Mojo's new series, The Worst Travel Show. Click the link below to see all the episodes and follow the show on Facebook. You won't need interdimensional cable to check out some of these. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shows for Rick and Morty fans. It's one part lame advice about stuff you know nothing about and a lot of vodka. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at both animated and live action TV programs that fans of the Adult Swim hit Rick and Morty might find appealing and a source of entertainment to take the edge off while we wait for the next season. Number 10, South Park. Stop f***ing trolling me. South Park has evolved from an animated short of base level gags to an edgy and beloved show that offers some of the most biting satire on TV. Who needs to read a bunch of stupid books when we've got History Channel? Due to its simple animation style, series creators Matt Stone and Trey Parker, along with their team, can write, animate, and produce an episode in about a week meaning the current events satirized and lampooned truly are contemporary. At the heart of this show are Stan, Kyle, Cartman, and Kenny, four boys who regularly either misunderstand the actions of the incompetent adults around them or take advantage of that incompetence. Through clever writing, the show regularly pokes fun at certain systems, ideas, or habits while highlighting the absurdity of modern life. Hold on to your bootstraps, cause we're gonna descend down into hell! Number 9. Big Mouth You have a really big mouth. Thank you, I think? While there are many shows that delve into the emotional changes brought on by puberty, Big Mouth takes a long, hard look at the physical changes as well, and reminds us that puberty is not only awkward and embarrassing, it can be downright disgusting too. Where are we, fallopian tube, uterus? We're in a pussy right now, right? While it seems like just a series of dick jokes and crude humor at first, the show is surprisingly sex positive, and an honest reminder of how depraved that time of life can seem. Never truly undermining the male or female characters, I was thinking, we were so good as friends. So good. Right, so maybe we should just be friends again? I love that. That's what this is missing, right? Being friends. Oh, good. It's a smart show that is not above good old-fashioned toilet humor. Ooh, I can't wait for you to see the next one. Jessie discovers her vagina. It's a very sex-positive episode. Number eight, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. No. <laughs> These people deserve each other. Each member of the gang is selfish, lazy, petty, and self-serving as they regularly try to screw one another over. Who was that? That's my booty call. We're into some really weird food fetish stuff. <laughs> Gross. As terrible as their antics are, there's something just so entertaining about watching a bunch of narcissists continually manipulating one another. Great performances from Danny DeVito, Caitlin Olsen, Glenn Howerton, Charlie Day, and others seal the deal. <laughs> Whether they're seducing a priest, considering questionable cuisine, engaging in illegal activities, or just pushing the limits of terrible social behavior, you'll be laughing. You injected Mexican collagen in my eye? I can't handle the stress you're giving me right now. Number seven, Archer. You are so gross. That's what he said, but in Italian. The show follows super spy Sterling Archer and his co-workers, whose antics and talents range from incompetent to highly skilled. On the surface, the series is just a debauched send-up of the spy genre. Archer's an alcoholic misogynist with some pretty serious mother issues. Then shut up, God! Okay, now what? You can unshut up. However, the more episodes watched, the more moments of real character development and nuances the audience is treated to. What's Who not to that? Oh. After eight seasons and a couple of fun genre shifts, Archer still manages to be entertaining, and its many one-liners and catchphrases have permeated modern lingo more than non-viewers would ever realize. Are you coming? No, but I'm breathing fast. Get it? Number six, Gravity Falls. I chewed my gum so it looks like a brain. Blah. While a show for children might not seem like an obvious choice at first, this Disney outing has frequently been regarded as a sort of Rick and Morty for younger viewers. Just the right amount of sun and shade, and point it away from where old man McGucket lotions himself. <laughs> Not that there isn't lots for adults to enjoy, or that the plots are the same, but the fast-paced clever writing and zany family setting feel very familiar. It also deals with interdimensional travel and weirdness, paranormal rather than alien mostly, cropping up in every episode. 
Also, as Justin Roiland and Alec Hirsch are friends, there are tons of crossover Easter eggs, with everything from characters popping up to literal doorways between the two universes. Yes, I'd like to order one large sofa chair with extra chair, please. High chair. Number five, Adventure Time. Let's go! Oh, wait up. I gotta finish tuning my viola. The regular show and Steven Universe both have their charms, but to leave this one out would be unacceptable. Like the previous entry, any given episode of Adventure Time will have a decidedly more family-friendly tone than anything in the chronicled adventures of Morty Smith and his alcoholic genius grandfather. Sorry, I saw a pearl pygmy skull in there. It reminded me of you. The way your eyes sparkle. Together, Finn the Human and his adoptive brother Jake, a shape-shifting bulldog, go on crazy magical adventures that push not only the boundaries of reality, but most importantly, imagination. It's that imaginativeness that makes it so appealing to fans of Rick and Morty. Just like how anything can happen between infinite realities, so too does it seem that anything is possible in the land of Ooh. What's up with your head? Eh, I'm trying something new. Number four, Futurama. For we still have one hope, the cave of hopelessness. Let me know how that turns out. From the creator of The Simpsons, this has a similar network television slash adult humor vibe. Like in Rick and Morty, science fiction is the backbone of the show, with the crew of the Planet Express traversing all across the galaxy in order to fulfill often pointless or questionable tasks. Nothing will go wrong. If something goes wrong, bring back the blood. Set in the future, it sees Earth cohabited by alien races as well as humans, and multiple intergalactic governments and systems, although the lead characters don't seem to mind this as much as Rick. Making excellent use of its setting, the show also offers some truly touching moments. Seriously, anyone who tells you that the ending of Jurassic Bark didn't leave them a little teary is lying to you. I will wait for you for a thousand summers. If you like this video, then you probably won't hate Watch Mojo's newest show, The Worst Travel Show, hosted by me, Kyle Gatehouse. Click this link below to watch it on Facebook. I can't I can't wait to be famous. Number three, Bojack Horseman. Say when. When. So you like self-destructive alcoholics with high-functioning depression? Cause we got the show for you. Following Bojack, a washed up actor, who is also a horseman, on the cusp of a comeback, the show is much more thoughtful than it would first appear. Well, we just have to solve the drug crisis in America. Easy! We'll take them all! Yes! In some ways, the anti-Rick. Bojack is constantly trying to find meaning in his sad existence, but is always let down one way or another. The humor in this one does not come from the characters' unhappy privileged lives, but rather in spite of it. Hey, why'd you roll up your sleeves like that? You look weird. Oh, I, uh... <coughs> Well, you know, I was I was trying out a new look. It was it was a dumb idea. Number two, Community, created, produced, and written by Rick and Morty co-creator Dan Harmon. Community plays with genre and tropes within each episode. Everything all right, Ben? <laughs> Be you keen, Avril Lavigne. <laughs> the series begins in an overtly cliche manner, setting up certain characters to the point that it feels familiar, and you think you can guess where it's all going, until Abed points out their tropes, effectively beginning the meta storytelling. Christmas wizard. I guess I can see that. By season two, there are post-apocalyptic paintball wars, ultimate speeches, a claymation Christmas sequence, an entire episode that's just D&D, &D, a PBS-style documentary pillow fight, and an actual zombie outbreak. Are you crazy? How are you gonna survive those zombies? Gonna be a nerd. Responsible for coining the darkest timeline, a phrase that's become a useful descriptor since 2016, community keeps you guessing, thinking, and laughing. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Well, you got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? You know what? I do! Hiya! Hot damn! Jeez, Tina, that looks bad. The nurse said this one will go down a couple of days. Uh, I'm not really getting what you just said. I said the nurse said... Still not getting it. Nothing but sweet instant incarceration for one and all! <laughs> what in a super jail we have come for you! Number one. The Venture Brothers. Hey, Captain, I got your key. Hope you're hungry. Because I'm going to feed it to you. 
Like Rick and Morty, this incredible Adult Swim classic uses comedy to explore some pretty heavy themes. Dean and Hank Venture are boy adventurers, a la Johnny Quest or the Hardy Boys. Or at least they want to be. Oh, and don't forget to call me the Hankinator. I'll do no such th They're here! Just like their super scientist father, Thaddeus Rusty Venture was. Big League, what'd you do? Nothing! I was just sitting here watching the worst porno ever. Is that a head? <laughs> However, the grown-up Rusty is a mess, and his life of boy adventuring has left him a depressed, antisocial narcissist, always trying to live up to the legacy of his actually brilliant and deceased father, Jonas Venture. With bureaucratic supervillains and years between seasons, you'd think it would have lost its charm, but this hilarious send-up of superheroes and adventure stories of old has fans perpetually clamoring for more. It's associated with some recent sin of yours. <laughs> I wish. I can't remember the last time I got lucky in that car. Hey, this is Kyle Gatehouse, host of Watch Mojo's new series, The Worst Travel Show. Click the link below to watch it on Facebook. For more great videos published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.